This is the hardest defense to play against in Madden 23. It stops the run. It shuts down the pass. Nope. And gets instant sacks all game. So if you want to see what defense I'm using to get results like this, stick around after the intro. For the cheapest, fastest, most reliable muck coins on the market, check out my coin sponsors at AOEAH.com and use discount code MONEY for 3% off. Link in the description below. In today's video, I'll be using a new offense in the run and guns. I'm trying to get you guys some new formations and schemes from a completely different playbook than the New Orleans Saints. But on defense, I'm once again going to be using my multi-D defensive ebook. The defensive formation I'm going to show you guys today, though, is probably in just about every defensive playbook in the game. But before I get into the video, as always, if you guys want to see more videos like this, please make sure to be a subscriber, hit the like button, let me know in the comment section, as it really helps out the video and the channel, and I really appreciate the support. If you guys need any more help, you can also always check out my ebooks, links in the description and the top pinned comments. All you have to do is click the links and you can have them sent to your email for instant download. The formation is the dollar three two, which is one of the meta formations this year and everyone pretty much knows about it. Typically the two most used plays from this formation is the DB fire two and the spinner blitz, but both of these defenses have issues that make them vulnerable in coverage. The spinner blitz, for example, leaves no one to cover the running back unless you make several adjustments or use the running back yourself. But there's another man zero blitz in this formation that I have never heard anyone talk about that actually takes care of all these issues for you with no adjustments at all and that is the play I'm going to focus on today in the zero blitz as you can see the running back is already manned up with the cornerback so there's really no setup at all there are several adjustments you can use to maximize this play's effectiveness against run or pass plays that I will show you throughout the video but if you're not good with adjustments they can all be completely optional on the first play since my opponent is using the Ravens a team that is known more for running the ball and since he is in a too tight end set I decide to set up my run defense which is to simply pinch the defensive line and spread the linebackers pinching the defensive line will close up any game gaps to stop runs up the middle and you can see that I still have a blitzing cornerback slightly outside the box for outside runs as well. I decide to switch it up and spread at the last minute though and you can see my opponent uses that as an opportunity to switch to an inside run as he hikes it before I can close the lanes back up but he only gets four yards on the carry which is going to be one of his longest runs of the day. One of the most important things when it comes to the setup is just to make sure that the player man to the running back is on the right side and as close to the running back as possible. I learned this the hard way though as I decided to flip the play so that the blitzing cornerback was closer to the line of scrimmage and that was a huge mistake as once again my opponent hikes the ball before I get my defense completely set up as he beats me in the flats with my own play the drive H wheel getting into field goal range in just one play before hurrying me up and using the corner strike glitch to get inside the red zone. On the next play, the safety is responsible for the tight end, and he is way out of position, so once again, all I have to do is flip the play, and now everyone is properly aligned. All I have to do to set up my pass defense and blitz from this formation is to use her either middle linebacker and hover the guard gap pre-snap before dropping back into coverage. I usually use the one that's the furthest away from the blitzing cornerback, as my job is to hold the guard long enough so that when I drop back into coverage, he has no way of sliding over or picking up the blitzing cornerback, which he could probably do if I use her the other linebacker. And on the next play, the cornerback gets in unblocked, but for some reason he just completely misses Lamar Oops. allowing him to escape and just throw it away to get to a second and ten. For coaching adjustments I start the game out by putting ball in the air defense to play receiver but I feel like since the last patch this setting results in much less interceptions and I've noticed some comments saying the same thing as well. Let me know in the comment section if you guys have noticed any difference. Other than that I made a full video breakdown on coaching adjustments recently so if you guys want to see more about this topic I will have a link in the description for that as well as an on-screen pop at the end of the video so stick around for that. On the next play he is using a another glitch play in the RPO reflat wheel and he high points it with a nearly seven foot tall tight end before just letting Mark Andrews overpower my safety to take a quick seven nothing lead. Damn it! But on the next drive I will show you how to fix all these with adjustments. On offense I'm using a new playbook that has a lot of formations that I like but none of which I've really settled in on as my favorite yet. So on the first drive I start off with an old classic the pistol bunch TE as it really has a good mix of run and pass plays in it. He gets me into a quick third and six before I hit a tight window throw for the first down the sideline before getting knocked back five yards on the next run and almost throwing an interception on the very next play. That was a close one. 
Now in third and 15, I have to make another big catch in a tight coverage as my opponent is making me work for everything I'm getting before I switch over to another offense that I'm working on. I see he's in a cover three, so I set up a one plate touchdown and it would have worked if I just waited a little bit longer and pass led a little bit more outside. How about new? Before the next play, I set up all my auto plays and it takes so long that I can't get the next playoff. And we find ourselves in the second and 15 again before getting nothing. Woo! and ending up in a third and 15 on back-to-back -back series before getting a receiver wide open over the middle just to get screwed on the potential catch animation. What the hell was that? I decided to go for it on fourth and long only to give the ball back nope. and put it on my defense at midfield. The only real setup that I'm making at this point is simply flipping the play for man alignment purposes as we stop the read option for a one yard gain on the next play before he beats me with a crossing round the next play to get the first down. Before he goes back to Mark Andrews over the middle on the next play who is much faster than I expected as he runs right past my user for a first down. I set my read option defense and the coaching adjustments but on the next play it doesn't matter as Lamar Jackson breaks all the rules and gets a big carry to inside the five. The game turns on the next play though as I don't know what happens Pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. Back oh. on the but I will take it as the fumble turns into an easy scoop and score for my first defensive touchdown of the game. Back on defense, I'm done seeing Reed Blankenship get pooped on by Mark Andrews, so I call a timeout and put Darius Slay at the safety spot right on top of him, so he will hopefully shut him down for the rest of the game. And on the next play, I start to make a few new adjustments, as I am now pressing the cornerbacks and playing over the top for better pass coverage so that they won't get beat deep. I also pinch the defensive line for run defense, but on the next play, you will notice that doing so doesn't hurt the blitz at all. <laughs> He runs the hurry up and this time it's 2nd and 15 and there's only 1.11 left before half so I figure he's probably going to want to pass so I'm going to make a few extra adjustments to help out both the blitz and pass coverage. I press and play over the top coverage once again only this time I spread the defensive line to get the ends around the tackles faster and I also guess pass so that the defense goes straight for the quarterback. On the next play though the pressure gets picked up and he tries to go right back to Mark Andrews only to find Darius Slay is all over him to shut him down. Then on 3rd and 15 I make all these same adjustments again only this time in the second half I get the ball and since I'm struggling with this new offense I decide to start to run the ball in the second half from a brand new formation that I haven't even labbed yet the full house wide so I set up my audibles and start to pound the rock as this has a few good runs to the inside and outside so in the first play I take it inside for a few yards before switching up to the sweet play for a big run to the outside and a first down before going right back to the inside run run So now up my opponent starts to run the ball as well and he gets his biggest run of the day for 13 yards only to see his running back stats pop up showing that this defense has held Dobbins to 5 carries for 14 yards. That last run was 13 which means he only gained 1 yard in the ground before that play. On the next play I set a pick for the offense getting the crosser completely wide open for another first down. On the next play he tries to run the ball again and he just needs to give that up. <laughs> I don't expect to see him run the ball again after that last animation, so I do my full pass defense setup once again. Only this time I don't even press the guard, but the pressure still gets in instantly as we get another sack, only to see Slay get roasted anyways by an above average receiver at best. He tries to get around his defense on the next play by running a toss, only to take a 4 yard loss, and Dobbins is right back to his 1 yard per carry average once again. Before Mark Andrews gets lost in the garbage on the next play, as he gets his second touchdown of the game to tie it up. Back on offense, I go back to the full house package that I scored on before, but this time I'm not having the same luck. So on third and seven, I just don't see anything I trust and I have to punt away. So with 3.42 left in the game, I need a stop as my opponent is in perfect position to kill clock and kick a field goal, or at least he would be if he could run the ball. On the next play, he's clearly taking the air of the ball as he lets the clock go down a red before running the play, and Mark Andrews is still carrying his offense. <laughs> Then on the biggest play of the game, I somehow get stuck on the defensive tackle, making me useless in coverage, only to give up a huge first down on a catch and run to the running back, but at least he ran out of bounds to stop the clock. What, are you f***ing retarded or something? That ain't f***ing right. He runs it again with Lamar, and at this point, I'm trying to let him score so I can get the ball back, as the animation saves the day, forcing him out of bounds once again to stop the clock with a minute 47 seconds left, and no more opportunities to get first downs. He now has to run, as the clock is all that matters, but we've seen how that's worked out today. How about new? As we use all of our timeouts and hold them to a field goal, and now we just have to get some offense. The next play, I go back to the gun type flex play that hasn't done anything for me all game, only this time I take a shot to the running back. 
just to make a play on the ball and Moss superstar cornerback Marlon Humphrey in coverage. So now with the field goal and tie seemingly in hand, I am now playing it safe as all I need is one play to take the lead. That play never comes though as I throw it away on the next play as well before taking the drag on the next play and accidentally deciding to go for the win as I call a hurry up one more time forgetting that I have no timeouts. I also look to the play clock to see if a delay a game would save me, but there's not enough time left on the game clock. So now I have to score. So I dial up something, only to see someone get wide open in the middle of the end zone. It's Charlie Banks! And we take the lead with 13 seconds left. And this is going to be the first time all game that I've chosen a different play on defense and that is a prevent as I don't want to take any chances of giving up a one play touchdown to lose the game. So on third and 10 with two seconds left, he realizes he can't pass for a touchdown so instead he tries to run it with Lamar Jackson. And since I guess pass, he actually almost gets it. Oh, he almost had it. You're gonna be quicker than that. We get a quick look at the stats as he threw for just over 200 yards with Lamar and his starting running back only gained 12 yards all game. So that's that's the video. If you guys want to see more gameplay videos like this, as always, please make sure to be a subscriber, hit the like button, and let me know in the comment section. Other than that, I will have some related content from today's gameplay popping up on screen. So if you guys want to check them out, I'm sure it'll have much game. And that's it. Thanks for watching, man. Money shit out show your support then head over to my patreon and join my team where you can get exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays as well as early access to my bids and more link in the description below